Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome everybody to today's session, OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Docker pass for highly regulated large enterprises. Our speaker today is Marcus Landau, who works as a DevOps engineer at T-Systems. Marcus has two decades of experience in the information and communication technology sector, and Marcus was involved into T-Systems pass product development right from the start. That said, Marco's team has tons of hands-on experience with large enterprises across various industries from automotive to defense, manufacturing, or logistics. For those of you guys who don't know T-Systems, it's the corporate customer unit of Deutsche Telekom, one of the largest telecommunication companies globally. This is our first session on OpenShift, and we are planning to host two further sessions in May and June on OpenShift security and CI, CD related topics. The dates will be announced soon, so stay tuned. A few logistics before we get started. First, we'd appreciate greatly if you use the text chat as much as you can. For starters, please let us know what is the level of experience around OpenStack and Open, uh, sorry, Docker and OpenShift, and also what's the present role, what industry and company you're working for. If you have any questions during the session, please submit them via the text chat as we go, and Marcus will answer them at the end of our session. This session is going to be recorded, and we will send out the URL within the next 48 hours. So without further ado, let me hand over to Marcus. Marcus, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Rafael, for the introduction. So I want to talk about OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Docker as a platform, as a, as a service uh, for highly regulated large enterprises, and want to touch briefly all topics that we where we have experiences in that area from a technical point of view and talk about um, all the things and challenges um, we are facing um, from the beginning and, uh, and now on also. So um, to get a good understanding what I'm talking about, I just want a briefly introduction about the sales perspective from us so that you get a better understanding why we are facing these technical problems or technical things um, um, to, to serve, uh, to, to provide a platform as a service for highly regulated um, large enterprises and why we are um, facing that challenges that I will explain later on. So just, just the sales perspective to get a common understanding of, of everything. So we want to make to, to to provide to you everything out of the box that you could imagine in a, in a platform as a service in a container based system um, just to be fast um, just to ready to use platform to jump start your business ideas no additional demands on current IT infrastructure and software and so on to be first move on the market for business innovations and to be flexible um, to combine your own and your partner solutions with catalog solutions. So that's the idea. And just to get an impression um, that you, you only need some minutes to get a productive environment for large enterprises and that you have the whole year, 24 hours, a fully management, managed platform and also for cost saving. So the idea is for, for um, for the business departments, that you can rapid uh, time to market for your business innovations, that you can easy to test without bottleneck technology, that you can significant cost savings because we are providing it in a, in a pay per use price model, um, and that you can easy um, integrate the IT systems with your existing IT landscapes. And also to start small, scale with success and so on. That's all the goals of our of uh, our offering. And that you have maximum security because if you are in a highly regulated market, you need security, you have to think about data privacy and so on and so on. And that that is operated in certified data centers. And if you are in such an um, uh, in such an industry then you know maybe that when you start with your idea and start with the development team, then you have to have um, a long time for buy hardware and software and to set up a platform before you can start to build um, your application. And we want to reduce that time significantly so that you can start 
with a productive environment for your ideas immediately and save a lot of months um, to, to start. And that's um, the uh, slide for the next um, for the next uh, discussion for the for, for presenting the technical details and the challenges and so on, because that's the major things that you are facing when you come from from a waterfall development process going to agile going to devops and when you are coming from a monolithic application art architecture going over an end tier now to a microservice thing and when you coming from physical server over virtual servers now in the containers world or when you come from a data center to the hosted and now to the cloud and i will explain the the challenges if you want to put your applications for, for large enterprises and highly regulated in the cloud with containers, with microservice architectures and DevOps. And therefore, I'm going um, bottom up and top down um, regarding the technologies um, that um, we are using and the challenges that we are uh, facing on as a cloud service provider in that area with the platform as a service offering um, to, to, to show you how, um, how these techniques or technical things are, um, could be um, used or you have to, to face that things uh, when, when, when you want to solve the problems or everything else you need to, to establish a containerized um, platform in the cloud, providing, providing microservices with your application um, and doing that in a DevOps area. So that's the main uh, um, things I will touch in the later technical, um, technical slides. And I will show you that regarding the cloud, container world, microservice and DevOps scenarios. So the idea is to have DevOps from the socket and um, how you can enable that for developers in large enterprises because you need sometimes DevOps and sometimes ITIL. So what fits your demands and so on that we have to, that we are facing if we want to use the platform as a service offering. And can we keep the development pace for each further release and so on? And how can I guarantee high quality operations with SLAs in an agile development process? How can I scale the business later on? What happens on failures and so on? So that's the, the aim of, of um, a platform as a service uh, inside of a large enterprise. And from our, from our experiences, we have learned a lot about ability in, in, in that area and the SLA-based, ITIL-based processes. And we have learned that you have to fulfill um, these, um, these um, aims with, with also um, consulting services so that you have to um, put some people who are able to, to operate such uh, a platform as a service directly based on ITIL processes in a way that you can integrate it in your agile um, application development te um, developer team because you always have to think of not about um, creating an application the first time, you always have to think about the, thing, uh, the life cycle of the application itself. And um, so plan, code, build, test, release, and so on, everything is relevant for that process. So that's the sales perspective. That's the aim we are facing, or that's the, the aim for our offering as a cloud service provider. And if you are thinking, or if you are um, in a large uh, enterprise where you want to provide such a platform to your internal customers or something like that, then, then I assume that you are facing um, next to the same problems. So going more technical on that uh, topic. So from, from the cloud stack layers with OpenShift and Kubernetes and Docker, um, our aim is to use this, um, 
all of the infrastructure as service providers that are possible. So we providing VMware-based vCloud offers, we providing open stack based um, open telecom cloud offering, we provide also um, Microsoft Azure um, infrastructure as a service things in our T systems data center. And then these infrastructure as a service offering is also managed by T systems. But our uh, offering um, technically is also possible, and we, we provide this to our customers already that um, we can install the upper layers of that stack also by the in, in the customer data center on premise on bare metal on their infrastructure as service layers and then these layers are managed by the customers whereas the infrastructure services um, i explained before are managed by systems directly and then you put on that the platform as a service layer it's based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Atomic. It's based on Docker, on Kubernetes, and OpenShift. And that's the platform as a service, including auto scaling and load balancing and so on. And that is completely managed by us. Or if you are facing the same problems when you want to provide it in your company, in your enterprise, <clears throat> then there is normally a team which provides these functionality to the internal customers or something like that. And then you're facing <clears throat> nearly the same problems as we face. Um, and I explain in the next on the next slide. But the next thing is you also have to think about the workloads provided as microservices used using different um, languages different middleware, different frameworks, and so on. And then you can think about if this is managed by the same team that is providing the platform, or if it's managed from a different team. From our perspective, when we're providing it as a cloud service provider, then it is maybe managed by our customer. Or if you are thinking about as a large uh, enterprise um, 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 user um, providing it to your internal customers, then maybe this this is managed by another department or something like that. And the business application itself, on top of that framework, of the top of that middleware, is normally managed also by a customer, internal customer or something like that. So that's the cloud stack layers where we are talking about, and I want to explain in the next slide then, um, which challenges we are facing um, with, this, um, with our specific offering and you uh, would face if you will do, um, or you will provide such um, cloud stack layer in your company by yourself. This is another another um, slide to to explain it in a different way so that everyone gets it. So when you are using the infrastructure as a layer, then from that layer the network storage and the server is provided, and that is integrated as the infrastructure and the platform as a service layer. And then in that layer, um, the operating system, the bug fixes, and so on, the databases, the web server, and apps are provided um, to the to the application <clears throat> and the application which is um, which uh, is established on that um, provided by the path layer and then you can provide your application as software as a service at scale up scale down and so on and in our offering you can use that in a pay as you go uh, model, 24 by 7 managed. So we are talking here about a container world. And in the container world, you we are using Docker at the moment. <clears throat> um, and in the container world, 
you have container processes, you have container images. These container processes with the container images are running on a container host, and the container images are managed in a registry. And I want to talk here especially about the things you need for large enterprises and the problems you're facing in large enterprises. And also when you are in a highly regulated environment where you have to fill security demands and um, <clears throat> data privacy demands, then you have to think about the following um, in, in, uh, deeper than if you are providing only a development environment or something like that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you have to care in such an enterprise, a large enterprise, especially about the inner values of such a container process. So when you didn't know where you built on your images uh, or your applications, then you normally have a problem. So you have to think what base images are you building on? And who builds that base image, uh, image for, for you? How quickly is it updated? Are there any SLAs available regarding patches and so on? So you always have to think about this if you are in such an environment and you want to go um, <clears throat> to a productive environment with the platform as a service operator. So container hosts need to be secure in such an environment. So when we are um, providing our offering with uh, OpenShift based on Kubernetes and Docker, then our security department checks our container hosts if they are secure. And if that is not fulfilled, we could not provide it to you in a productive way. And everyone who is in such an environment has to fulfill that too. And there, Red Hat Enterprise Linux plays its strengths, the certifications, the SOIs from there, from merchants and the system experiences are needed uh, to fulfill such um, uh, things that the container rules are secure. If you think about infrastructure as a service, then you have to fulfill the same for the hypervisors. And here in that environment, uh, the container host has to fulfill all this. And then <clears throat> in the OpenShift Kubernetes part, um, the SE Linux uh, plays a, a, big, a big role there and you have to fulfill that that secures everything uh, regarding your container processes. <clears throat> but if you think about what is in the container image, then you always have to think about how the patch management is, is uh, done in such a container world, because all, everything that is executed in the container process is stored in the container image and not on a centrally <clears throat> organized or operated host, because it's everything stored inside the container image. So if there are you be, um, if, if you have to secure your environment, you have to change your base images always. So new base images triggers rebuild of top layers and so on. So you always have to think about these <clears throat> hierarchies of the container image and how you have to rebuild it. And if you rebuild, you always have to restart the running workloads with a new fresh images. So you have to um, always think about the redeployment and so on. So that's always the challenge here in the container world because everything has changed from infrastructure as a service to a container um, mindset. <coughs> and if you are thinking about the container host and the process uh, on, on, on the host and their security, then you have to uh, assess or the, or the um, um, security department will assess your container host and therefore check if, if the applications with the different run times and the different containers are isolated um, um, enough. And therefore, um, the container host on, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux using the namespace, C groups, and SE Linux 
Um, but you have to fulfill that all the drivers that are used in the Linux kernel are using that security functionality. So we are facing in the, in the first steps with OpenShift and Kubernetes that the NFS driver was not using the namespaces or the SE Linux tag, um, on, on, to be precisely. So <clears throat> this has to be fulfilled by the container hosts, and therefore um, you must provide these information uh, for your security part, department and then they, when they are auditing that. So if, if you are familiar, familiar with the open shift in Kubernetes, then you know this big picture. Um, just to get an impression of what is needed for, for security purposes um, um, uh, when, when you um, have to fulfill audits of your security department or in our, um, in our role as a cloud service provider from our customers. Then OpenShift and Kubernetes uh, plays a good role to fulfill from the application point of view um, the security demand because um, the applications are running on, on worker nodes inside of um, OpenShift which is based on, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as explained before. So that's the container host. And the master for orchestrating all the applications on the container host is authenticated and so on, it uses the data store to inject um, configuration details at startup time of the containers in the worker nodes. And that's always uh, very good for security demands, so everything is stored here and always injected here at runtime only. So if the ephemeral container is done, then you have no security holes or something like that um, on the container host itself. So that's very good for, for, for that. And also for operational point of view, everything is um, provided by the Kubernetes part of scheduling and management and replication on the worker nodes. So from the open shift and Kubernetes way for the application, that is very um, good supported and you can easily convince security and data privacy departments from that point of view. So what are the challenges if you want to provide such open shift um, environments to your customer in a way that every customer gets its own open shift instance. So we providing to our customers not one big shared um, open shift instance. So the big picture you saw before uh, is deployed for every customer um, in a dedicated way. And for that, I mean, we're talking about the three digit number of OpenShift clusters that we provide to our um, IT system. Then you have to think as such a cloud service provider about an automated deployment of such a dedicated platform instance. And as explained before, normally we deploy that in a virtual data center, but we're also deploying it on, on bare metal and something like that. So in, in, in not only in virtual data centers, but always you have to deploy it in a way that the security zones and physical and logical secure, security layers are um, in the correct way uh, configured automatically. And also you want to make connections uh, to the internet. And in our case, we are also have a lot of um, uh, IoT uh, customers and therefore you uh, have to fulfill that these connections to the internet uh, provide a lot of concurrent connections and that that is always um, established uh, with security services including low balance firewalls routing and so on and if you are think about such a platform as a service offering in the cloud even if you deploy it by yourself then you <clears throat> have to create connections to you, uh, or in our case, to our customer networks concerning internet and intranet regulations. Maybe you only have to use that um, 
platform as a service in the intranet uh, of your company and provide it to the external users via the uh, um, existing um, um, networks, um, network um, things. So we have to provide in our uh, thing that we can connect it with MPLS, with internet connections, including VPN, Blue Line, Data Center backbone connections, and so on. And as shown in the in the big picture of OpenShift, um, but not explained um, in detail, um, there is the possibility to use persistent volumes inside of such containers. And if you have to, to um, fulfill data protection regulations, then you have to think about how to provision such persistent volumes um, to your containers and how you um, um, configure it in a way that retention times for the data and so on after uh, deletion and so on are fulfilled. So that's always the challenges um, when you provide such a specific customer in. And after providing it, um, you have to fulfill a monitoring, monitored operation of that answer. And as explained in, in, in the sales view, you have always have to think about what must be ITIL based in a large enterprise and what could be DevOps oriented. In our case, we have to fulfill that our, all of our platforms are ITIL based operated. So we have to integrate it in the incident change and patch management. And as well, we have to provide logging, monitoring, backup and recovery for all of our customer instances. So we have to to realize it in a way that that is automatically integrated. And if you, if you are if you want to provide um, to your internal customers um, uh, such an, an offering, then you have to fulfill, I assume, the same. <clears throat> and we also provide, or we are also enabling um, these customer instances that they are spanned over uh, maybe triple triple core data centers and something like that, and then that we can um, operate all of these platforms with an SLA. And therefore, <clears throat> we also uh, are going or facing the challenge for geo replication and using their, we'll be, we will use their, the OpenShift Kubernetes Federation things and so on. So that are always challenges in that area regarding um, disaster recovery, disaster tolerance, and so on, and so on. Yeah, but the next part is, or, or, or only talked about the platform itself, or what you are facing if you want to operate <clears throat> such a part yourself, but then on top, you want to operate the workloads on it. And we also want to offer um, to our customers, or if you provide a platform as a service in, in your company to internal customers, you have to think about the same. We want to offer our customers that their um, customer workloads are also operated um, as a managed service in a professional uh, fashion. And also on a pay-as-you-use basis, as I explained um, in the in the sales oriented uh, view on 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 our on our goals, so we have to think about how we can provide frameworks, middle base, middleware, database systems, including patch management, and how it is and, and that it is provided in a way that we could easily uh, take over in our professional operation, and including SLA. And if you are familiar, familiar with the Kubernetes and Docker world um, in such an area, then you may have faced the problem that it is not so easy or at the moment impossible in Kubernetes to, to limit network band, bandwidth and IROPs. So if you want to guarantee SLAs there, 
you're facing these problems at the moment, and you have to provide a solution for that. <clears throat> yeah, and um, in, in, in our operations, and maybe um, you're facing the same problem, um, the individual workloads must be managed also ISO based. So we have to integrate the incident and change method, or we have to integrate the customer work, the workloads in the containers itself also in the incident and change management. And we have to provide things for logging, monitoring, backup, and recovery. And in such environments, it is sometimes not so easy um, to analyze uh, when customer workloads have runtime problems and something like that because it's a distributed container platform and therefore you uh, must provide support uh, for analyzing such problems. And that's also a challenge often. In our case, as a cloud service provider, you also must provide user management in a self-service way, and you have must, and the integration and existing systems must be, must be feasible. Um, roles and rights concepts for in, in, um, must be fulfilled. Consumption of the of the um, of the, when the containers are running with the workload, the consumption they they are producing must be uh, provided to the customer. Um, logging application oriented more monitoring too. The consumptions must be displayed um, in our case in an hourly representation. If you are, um, pro have to, to provide the information for cost centers or something like that, then you're facing um, near to the same problem. Provision of logging for platform and application operation. Um, we, as the platform provider, or if you're doing it yourself um, for, for your internal customers, then you have to, to uh, provide all the logs of the platform itself to you, or in our case, to the systems operation. And the application logging must be provided to the customer um, of the platform. So that's also a challenge um, if you provide this in a way that the different that there are different departments for um, uh, responsible so we decided to provide such uh, customer instances to our um, customer instances of the platform as a service to our customers in a way that we provide normally central components where we connect each instance we are auto automatically deploy on the appropriate infrastructure as a service. Um, so the big picture of OpenShift as shown before is deployed in an automatic automated way here in a, in a dedicated customer data center. It is also possible to provide their virtual machines so that you could um, uh, integrate with services which are not containerizable at the moment, um, and then automatically connect it to system monitoring, system logging, management portal, identity service, system backup, and also um, a specific Docker repository. Even um, uh, OpenShift itself uh, provides also an, a Docker repository inside of each platform. But later on, there are some um, words about um, continuous integration and continuous deployment. So if you think about um, all this, um, then you may think about also what if maintenance and emergency changes are needed. And then you have to think about um, Regarding, thing, regarding things, uh, regard, regarding the platform itself. So, from as we as a cloud service provider, we have uh, facing the problem that we operate different versions of OpenShift container platform. But even if you 
um, um, deployed yourself, then you may facing the, the problem that you not only have one open shift container platform for, for yourself, I'm coming to that later on, also um, so for, for productive and for development environments, you normally will provide different open shift container platforms, different instances of that. And then you may facing the same problem that you have different versions on the development and on productive um, environments. And we are facing also the problem that some customers requirements are that you need 10 years of support and something like that. And in a fast moving world like the OpenShift Kubernetes world where every three to four months uh, a new version is um, available, then you have to think how you can fulfill these challenge uh, with customer requirements and so on. And in our case, as a part of Deutsche Telekom Group, there we, we must fulfill all the group IT security requirements. There is a, a whole department with a four-digit number of employees which are checking every uh, bit and byte uh, of every um, productive environment. And we have to fulfill all the security and data protection concepts of them. And therefore, we have to always um, provide information for auditing all the new versions of the platform itself. And if there are on promise installation, then we also have to fulfill that customer um, requirements regarding security and so on. So that's always the real challenge to fulfill um, only the, the platform um, topics um, coming from the fast moving world of OpenShift and Kubernetes um, with these three to four months um, rele uh, releases on, the, on their roadmap. But that's only the platform. And then you have to think about all the images that you are using in your containers. So for the base images you are using, you have to do the same. So the the other way around um, there is the problem of that you have um, older versions of OpenShift uh, for your actual Docker images, and you have maybe created uh, Docker images with newer versions of Docker running on your old um, uh, platform, and so on. So you have to fulfill all these challenges of different versions um, um, from, from, from security point of view and so on. And then you have to think about if you want to an individual whitelist for your uh, platform regarding all these base images because there are um, standardization things uh, in your environment and so on. So you have to think about all these base images you are using in a specific platform. <clears throat> and if you are thinking about the middleware and database systems, then you have always uh, must always have a concept for managing these um, middleware and these database um, systems as a managed service. If you manage it by yourself, you have to think about that. We as, as a service provider um, have concepts for managing this as, as um, an offering of managed services, but you have always defined this for the container environment. So, um, a short um, change of the subject. What we are facing um, when we are talking about um, um, deploying such a container platform um, in, in a large enterprise, fulfilling um, security uh, requirements and so on, then we always have to think uh, also um, in detail about the container network itself. So you have to understand how the container network on that platform works for your microservice architecture. So if you want to, to fulfill the assessment of security departments, then you have to know what is going on in that platform. So 
in an open shift, there is, there is a software defined network where you, all your containers are connected to. And uh, from Kubernetes world, there is um, the term pod where you can combine um, Docker containers um, to one unit. Um, and you can con think about that, that it's like a virtual machine for just one service. And this <clears throat> is attached to the virtual switch on the platform and that it is isolated via the XLAN house and so on. And the virtual switch is um, established with rules and firewall rules and so on, so that you can fulfill in that microservice architecture things needed for um, coming from the old or from, from the traditional approaches with end-tier architectures and so on to, to fulfill security demands regarding how network traffic is um, routed through the network um, on the container platform itself. But you have to, to understand that uh, always and to, to think about that. So, um, I want to, to give just a short, uh, short impression about it, um, that you have to know that um, normally um, it is clear, it is easy to understand how it works, but when you are going to, to security assessments, then sometimes um, the, the details are needed. So in the open shift, there's a software load balancer, which um, in intelligently dispatching the HTTP, HTTPS traffic and so on, and the Kubernetes service abstraction um, unifies all the copies of an application efficiently and so on. That's really fruitful for fulfilling all the security um, requirements. Um, and um, there are different versions of software-defined networks um, of open chips for the container network, uh, which um, provide functionality to fulfill um, or such demands. So you have to know that in OpenShift, the container network is based on a software-defined network, and we are concentrating in our deployments on the OpenShift software-defined network offerings. There are also it's also possible to use infrastructure as a service software-defined network inside of OpenShift, but as you can imagine from from our um, sales. Um, uh, goals, um, we want to provide um, the platform as a service in every infrastructure as a service offering, and therefore we concentrate on, on the open shifts of the defined networks. But that's um, our decision regarding our architecture um, for, for the deployment. Um, so in such a software defined network, all the pods are reachable by random IP addresses. And that could be easily uh, combined via um, uh, the Kubernetes service structure to, to um, um, load balanced um, microservices. And that is only, that is only um, routed inside of the container platform. There, there, with that, you can fulfill a lot of security requirements um, that it is not accessible from the outside world. And when you want to provide um, the application um, in the internet or in the intranet, then you could um, configure your software load balancer of the platform itself to provide that application inside um, your, your defined network. So these, this is about this you have to think, you, have to, you could, um, provide all the information to your security uh, department or something like that, because that's relevant um, to fulfill all their requirements. Okay, so another, another change of the subject regarding these, um, the um, uh, slide uh, from the sales perspective where I showed that um, you're going to the cloud, you're going to um, containers, you're going to to microservices, and you're going to DevOps workflows. 
And therefore, you have to know uh, how you could um, deploy the things um, inside of, uh, of such a um, container world. And then you have to, to know, uh, to, to think about uh, the workflow, which is realized there. And you have to combine there um, your source code. You have to combine it with your base images, where you have to provide all the information about patch management and so on. And then you're building on top of that existing images, new Docker layers, which you have to store in a Docker registry and then provide it um, to your worker nodes, your container nodes, where the application then runs on top. And if you want to, if you want to, make patch management or provide um, new releases of your application, then you have to rebuild a new version of your image because that's the container world. You have to provide it in a new Docker image, in a new Docker layer, and then you have to restart everything and in a, an open shift normally as a rolling update. So your service is always available, but you're changing the complete Docker image, uh, and you redeploy everything. And that you have always uh, to fulfill when you're thinking about the application lifecycle. And therefore, we are concentrating on um, that what OpenShift provides in that container world, so that you are you that we are providing everything with the source to image workflow that OpenShift introduces in that world to combine the code for your application, combine it with frameworks, middleware, and so on um, as base images, which could be patch managed um, by, by a provider like Red Hat and T-Systems, and which automatically builds then the new layers um, uh, for with euro specific applications and could deploy that on the worker nodes of the platform so that you could fulfill the challenges I explained before that you always have to think about what is in the base layer, what have you to rebuild uh, um, when patch, patching things is needed, when new application versions are needed and so on. So this is a major workflow uh, which supports these challenges that you are facing um, when you want to fulfill all the security requirements and, and so on um, in a containerized world. And we are supporting that and Red Hat supporting that with um, um, images that were pre-configured when patch management is fulfilled by Red Hat or by us. And you have to fulfill that for your own applications by yourself. So you have to create your registries, um, uh, your image versions and uh, using the Docker registries uh, to, to um, realize the application lifecycle in a containerized world. And therefore, you have to think also about continuous integration, continuous delivery, and so on. And then you will see, okay, uh, to, to put it in, in production and use it in development cycles in a way that you could fulfill such things as I um, told about with the limiting from bandwidth or IOPS. Um, you may need more than one um, OpenShift Kubernetes cluster and so on. And therefore, you could um, use a non-productive environment where you can do your development and, and unit testing and integration testing and so on. And using a second, a second uh, cluster for productive usage. And then you have to think how you promote things from one to the other. And this could be done um, um, with OpenShift functionality, but this could also be done via, for example, Jenkins to 
organize these different um, different uh, steps you have to fulfill using specific artifact repositories uh, in between to define the, the delivery delivery elements um, which could be stored um, centralized to fulfill also the requirements uh, from your enterprise including um, ITIL based uh, processes and so on. And that's why you have to think always about more than only one um, uh, environment uh, of OpenShift. And there are a lot of things that when you uh, um, interesting when you are thinking about um, what the developer wants to do. So when the developer wants to code, he not always wants to check in everything in Git and so on. But you need need a sandbox where the developer can can play around using um, public images or something like that. But then you must also and concentrate on the things that you need for your productive environment. So um, all this based on the container images must be um, uh, provided um, to the developer, to the test team, to the operations team of your application and must be fulfilled in, 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 in a way that it is possible to handle in a container as well. And then you also have to think about um, things, um, what can you do uh, in the, in the where when, when you're changing a lot of the details of your application that you may not want to create always a new container that you not want to check um, all the small changes in the Git repository and so on. So there are a lot of um, challenges um, that the um, this, this way from development to production uh, is providing and what, and, and what you have to fulfill um, when you provide a platform as a service also to the development and team and use for production environment. As I explained, logging is also a thing, so OpenShift is um, very helpful there because um, OpenShift um, um, is using a logging mechanism uh, which is established on, on the platform itself so that your um, application could uh, use that directly. And we also provide for monitoring uh, metrics execution where you can use uh, Prometheus um, um, and provide in your application exporters um, and could automatically um, um, use these endpoints um, and um, the information your exporters are providing are automatically uh, um, shown in the Grafana dashboard or something like that. And we could enhance that for our operational point of view for the platform itself with all the information, the infrastructure uh, below is also providing to us. So that was a briefly a presentation, briefly touching all the topics that you are facing uh, when you want to to provide a platform as a service with OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Docker for large enterprises, um, uh, fulfilling all security requirements and so on. So, Rafael, I'm through my presentation now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Marcos. Um, everyone attending our session, uh, please uh, share your questions. Uh, we will keep the uh, Q&A session open for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Um, for starters, Marcus, one question around uh, CI, CD. Um, can you share your thoughts on OpenShift, CI, CD, best practices in large corporations? Yeah. Uh, from our experience, there are there is no best practice for that because we we seen in in, uh, in the enterprises and at our customers that um, even the departments um, are need need different CI/CD pipelines for their specific applications. 
So from our experience, there are a lot of uh, approaches needed and um, OpenShift and uh, Kubernetes uh, is providing or uh, is not limiting um, all the different approaches. Um, and therefore, um, we, we are planning a, a follow-up meetup here um, where we uh, where an expert from our side um, with the CI CD pipelining experience will make some hands on with CI and with possible CI CD solutions. Okay, I see there are no questions uh, coming in from, from the audience. Um, for those of you guys who uh, joined us later, um, this session is going to be recorded. Um, and the recording is going to be available within the next 48 hours. You'll receive an email. Mm. And as Marcus said, we are planning further sessions. So consider this session here an introductory session, um, followed by a CI, CD, and a security session in May and in June. And the dates are going to be announced soon. So uh, please stay tuned. Oh, I see there's a question. Hold on a sec, Marcus. Okay, so the question is um, coming from Smita. What are the, what are can you name any strategies or give examples for strategies for dealing with failures? Mm -hmm. So failures for applications. Um, there is OpenShift and Kubernetes functionality inside. So failures of uh, containers is um, is handled by the platform itself. So if the application um, um, goes down, then the Kubernetes and the OpenShift part is automatically restarting the things um, in in a way um, you have scaled and so on. And on the other hand, failures of the platform, um, then our um, we we have realized um, in our um, monitoring that if uh, worker nodes or something like that are failing, then we could set up immediately other worker nodes uh, which are uh, hand, handed over the workloads. And the Kubernetes and OpenShift part automatically restarts containers then on these newly uh, worker nodes. So if you're facing application problems, the platform handles it. And if you are facing platform problems, then um, uh, our monitoring is realizing that uh, the appropriate number of of worker no container holes is available, and then the platform itself restarts all the application automatically. Okay, Marcus, let's wait another one or two minutes and see if any questions come in. So last chance to ask your questions. Okay, nothing, no, no further questions are coming in. So Marcus, thank you, thank you again a lot. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, please stay tuned as uh, we're gonna host another two sessions on CI, CD, and security for large, highly regulated enterprises. So again, thank you everyone for joining and uh, stay tuned.